At the start of every NBA season, there's always a couple of players and teams that go scorched earth, dominating anything and everything in their way. Just over one week into this season, it's the same. The Bulls started out 4-0 for the first time since Michael Jordan was on the roster. John Morant is the front runner for most improved, but will any of these things stick and do hot starts in the NBA really mean anything? Let's investigate. Sit back, relax, and take this in. This episode is presented by Advil, fast pain relief you can trust. And before things get heated up, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We greatly appreciate all the support you guys have for the channel. Now let's get started. Just to give you some perspective, one week into last season, the only undefeated teams in the league were the Orlando Magic, Indiana Pacers, and Atlanta Hawks, who all started out the season 4-0. The Magic finished with one of the worst records in the league, meanwhile the Pacers were a playing team, and the Hawks advanced all the way to the conference finals, which makes the results sort of a mixed bag. So are these Bulls like last year's Magic, Pacers, or Hawks? The first 4-0 start since his Airness wore red and black is an encouraging sign for a team that hadn't been above the 500 mark since March of 2017, but maybe we should pump the brakes a little bit. The Bulls currently have the second best defensive rating, allowing just under 100 points per 100 possessions, but let's look at who they beat. The lowly Pistons twice without number one overall pick Cade Cunningham, the Pelicans without Zion Williamson, and the Toronto Raptors without Pascal Siakam. Not necessarily top-notch offenses, with all three of them ranking in the bottom third in offensive efficiency. Essentially, the Bulls' defense, which was a question mark coming into this season, has looked much better than people expected. But let's see what happens when the competition ramps up. They will undoubtedly be competing for a playoff spot this season, but the logic says their defense won't be what gets them there. The Hornets also got out to a hot start, going 4-0 through their first five games while also boasting the second best offensive rating in the entire league. Their improved play is in large part due to a stellar start from LaMelo Ball, who's following up his incredible Rookie of the Year campaign by averaging 19.6 points, 6 assists, and shooting better than 46% from behind the arc. That shooting percentage more than likely won't stick throughout the season, but his potency for playmaking absolutely will. It also helps that forward Miles Bridges has seemingly taken a leap this season, averaging 26 points, eight rebounds, and two steals on better than 50% shooting from the field to take home the NBA's Eastern Conference Player of the Week award. Before we go any further, let's take a break for Take This In Trivia presented by Advil, fast pain relief you can trust. Who was the last Charlotte player to win Player of the Month? The answer is Al Jefferson, who won Player of the Month for the Charlotte Bobcats in March of the 2013-2014 season and also made the All-NBA third team that season. Now back to the video. Another player who is going scorched earth right now is Grizzlies point guard John Morant. Morant has taken steps to improve his game every season since winning the 2019 Rookie of the Year award, but right now he's on a different level, averaging a league-leading 30 points per game, 8 assists, and 1.5 and steals through 4 games. He's also shooting 45% from behind the arc. Yes, it's 4 games, but Morant is going to be asked to do more on offense this season without the help of big man Jonas Valanciunas, who was traded to the Pelicans. And while his shooting percentages might not last, the uptick in usage should easily put him in the conversation for the most improved player award, if not MVP. So that's with the hot starts, but what about teams or players that are struggling? Both Russell Westbrook and James Harden came out sluggish, with Westbrook shooting 22 of 37 at the rim, where he is usually elite, and 12 of 30 from the mid-range area, where he usually uses his patent pull-up jumper. With Harden, the former MVP isn't getting by his defenders as easily as he's accustomed to, and isn't getting to the foul line at his normal frequency. After averaging 10 plus free throw attempts for seven out of the last nine seasons, Harden attempted just 12 total through the first three games. While some may credit that to the NBA's new rule changes on shooting fouls, it's not just that. According to Basketball News, Harden is getting to the rim 9% less than what he did last season. He's taking 10% more floaters and mid-range shots as well, which means that he isn't getting the separation necessary to get to the rim. I think it's more likely that Harden and Westbrook, to a lesser extent, both of whom are now well into their 30s, are taking some time to get their feet under them at the start of the season. A team that is struggling that may be concerning is Chris Paul and the Phoenix Suns, who went just 1-3 through 4 games with bad losses to the Nuggets, Blazers, and Kings. They boast a pretty bad minus 8.9 net rating and have been outscored by 26.6 points per 100 possessions when the point guard 
squad is on the court. But at the same time, it could just be tired legs from a long finals run and a short turnaround and Olympic summer for all-star Devin Booker. The Suns have high expectations on them this season. It could be tough to live up to them. We should know about all these things soon enough. Will the Bulls still be good defensively a month from now? Will the Hornets and LaMelo stay scorching hot? Can Jaw win most improved? Can Westbrook and Harden bounce back? And will the Suns still be contenders this season? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.